President Bush sees Iran as a strategic threat, intent on acquiring nuclear weapons. He's likened direct diplomatic engagement with Tehran to appeasement of Hitler. And yet, he's just sent a top U.S. diplomat to meet Iran's nuclear negotiators. My guest today is a former CIA agent who says America is slowly facing up to an uncomfortable truth. Iran is a regional superpower. So what are America's options? Robert Baer, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Does the U.S. government have a clearly defined strategy towards Iran? No. What, what's, what's happened is the United States at this point officially is refusing to admit that we've lost Iraq in terms of it, one day it will become an Iranian ally rather than an American ally. You've got 65 percent of the population are Shia. They were politically formed in Iran. Uh, they have ties that bind to Iran and they can't dispense with Iran. And Iran has strategic interest in Iraq stronger than ours, the United States or Britain's. Uh, Iran is capable of closing the Gulf. It is capable of taking the world's reserve tanks out. Iran is not the Iran of 1979 or even the Iran of 1988. We have not caught up with those facts. We continue to talk down to the Iranians, which is absolutely the worst thing you can do. I want to talk in some detail about Iraq and the impact of the Iraq war on relations with Iran. But before we get there, let's just stick with uh, the immediate problem the U.S. is wrestling with, and that is how to get the Iranians to stop their uranium enrichment program. Does Washington really believe diplomacy can work? It does now because there's not an option. You, 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 the well, that doesn't mean it really believes it. It may be pursuing no, something it, it doesn't believe will work. It would prefer to attack Iran. It would prefer to take out the nuclear facilities if it could. It would prefer to cause a revolution in Iran. Uh, there is a belief in the United States, in the State Department, that Iran is on the verge of some sort of revolution, uh, almost secular revolution. It's not true, but that is the working assumption in Washington. But when Mr. Bush authorizes a, a senior State Department official, William Burns, to go to Geneva and actually participate in, albeit, quote, unquote, as an observer, but to be there with senior Iranian negotiators talking about the complexities, the detail of Iran's nuclear program. Does that send a signal that something has fundamentally shifted in the last few weeks and months? Oh, I think absolutely. I think we're recognizing at this point what Iran is. That, that, that Iran does have us blackmailed with oil. It does have us blackmailed in the Gulf, and there's not much we can do except talk. We cannot attack Iran as a rational policy decision. The Iranians will take out the oil in the Gulf. It will kick America into a depression at $12 a gallon. When you say we, the United States, cannot attack Iran, does that may mean that you, for one, as a former CIA agent, believe that Iran, in the end, has to be allowed to acquire the nuclear technology that will allow it to build a bomb? I think Iran's power is such that it's going to build a nuclear bomb at a later date. A nuclear bomb is simply a way to get attention. Uh, it seems like a bit of a devious policy. Well, it's not simply a way to get attention. It's a device which can kill hundreds of thousands but, of but people. They're, but they're not making one. There's no evidence of it. And, and but the, all the evidence suggests that they might be, within 18 months to three years, in a position to make a nuclear device if they continue down the track they are currently on. I'm not so sure about that. Since 1980, I've re been reading national intelligence estimates. Every one of them said in four years Iran will have a nuclear bomb. 1980, 1984, 1988, and so on. It's something that they've been teasing us with for a long time. The Iranians' military in itself does not need a nuclear bomb now, maybe later, 10 years from now. They simply after the United States are the most important power in the Gulf. Uh, they have surrogates in Lebanon which effectively control the government. 
Syria is an alliance with a, Iran that it cannot break. Iran is the victor, especially yeah, after the Iraq all war. All of those things I want to talk about, they're all import, important. Doubtless, Iran's power in the region is important, whether or not it has the bomb. But I want to stick to the bomb for the time being, because the fact is, if there is a window of opportunity, you say that that's a dubious proper, proposition, but many people would disagree with you. If there's a window of, uh, of possibility to stop Iran acquiring this key military nuclear uh, technology, do you not believe that politicians in the West, leave aside Israel, are in the end bound to do what they can to stop it? No, because you're, you are basing that argument on the, that Iran is suicidal and would actually, let's, let's say they are building a bomb, let's say make a small one. You are assuming that Iran is suicidal and will attack Israel. I don't accept that assumption. So you are saying, in the end, the world has to live with an Iran that has a nuclear weapon. And Why? actually, it doesn't really change very much. Why not? They, they act as a rational power. We, we, what we can't do is go See, into a preemptive war against another Middle Eastern country based on bad intelligence, and the intelligence is bad. So you suggested to me from the very beginning that America is having to change its mind on Iran, but nobody has changed its mind to say what you've just said to me. George Bush, of course, wouldn't say it in a million years. Even Barack Obama, who actually supports the idea of direct engagement with the Iranian regime. He says he will do whatever, whatever it takes to protect the security of allies, most particularly Israel. So nobody in America is using the language you're using. Well, you know, you're touching on a sensitive subject, but the debate on Iran has been driven by Israel, which believes it's under existential threat. There is very little independent debate. I believe that because the president of Iran has pretty much said the very same thing. He's not in power. He's, he's, the man is, is probably crazy. He's not only crazy, he's probably bipolar. He does not have his finger on the nuclear trigger. Uh, there's a Politburo, an informal Politburo in Iran, which, which runs the country. And that Politburo is very dubious of Ahmadinejad. Do you think that that's much consolation to uh, Israelis living in Tel Aviv when you tell me that they shouldn't take account of the threats coming from the president of Iran because he's a bipolar maniac? The very fact that Mr. Ahmadinejad is the president of Iran surely is reason for Israelis to worry about Iran acquiring the bomb. Well, you know, Saddam used to threaten Israel to destroy Israel over and over again. The Arabs have, why should Of course, the Saddam didn't just threaten Israel. He sent Scud rockets into Israel. That was in the middle of a war. I mean, it's, it's different. I mean, there's, there's, the rhetoric, there's rhetoric in the Middle East of good and evil, and then there's what people do. Iran today could start World War III in Lebanon. They could strap some chemical warheads on these rockets, fire them into Tel Aviv, and we would have World War III, but the Iranians do not. You clearly believe that Iran, and as a phrase you've, you've used, indeed in a forthcoming book you're going to use it again, you believe Iran is the new superpower, don't you? But superpowers surely have to have a nuclear capability. If one looks at the trajectory of China or India, part of them becoming superpowers of one form or another was acquiring the bomb. Mm -hmm. If Iran is to be a superpower, it needs the bomb. It probably needs the bomb, but what I'm saying is there's no evidence it's rushing for it, and there's no evidence it's going to use it. I mean, Israel has the bomb, but we trust the Israelis not to launch a preemptive war using a nuclear bomb. And you